Good afternoon guys and welcome to episode 4 of the beginner welding series. In this week's episode we're going to do some MIG welding. Welcome back guys and for those of you that are new to the channel and have, or maybe haven't been following along with this series I'll put a link up above so you guys can catch up to speed but for now let's get to welding. All right, so with our machine plugged in to a dedicated outlet, the next thing we're gonna do is turn on the gas bottles. And what you wanna do with these, uh, this is C25 gas, and with these tanks, you wanna open the tank up all the way. And I set the CFH to 20 with the machine uh, trigger pulled. So in other words, when I pull the trigger and gas is flowing through the MIG gun, this will drop down, that'll be at 20. So, now with all our safety gear, we've got our helmet, glasses, respirator, some gloves, and we got a couple test pieces. So, we got to set up the welder next, so we got to figure out what we're working with for material. So, great thing about this, this is an awesome little tool. This is uh, a gauge to tell you the material thickness that you're working with. So that way you'll know what to set the machine up at. So this right here is eighth inch angle. And we'll go to the eighth inch scale. And there it is. So that confirms that we're gonna be welding on eighth inch material or 125 thousandths. So we'll go over the welder, pop up our nice lid. We go to steel. We are using C25 gas. I've got 30 thousandths wire in it. And eighth inch, do you see it? Keep going, keep going, keep going. So it's gonna be between 10 and 12 gauge because you've got 105 thousandths and 135. So we know the first setting's gonna be four and it's gonna be between 40 and 50, so four and 45. So, set it for four. We'll go to 45. That's gonna get us real close in the range where we need to be. All right guys, so now we've got our welder all set up. Now, this leads me to the next step, and that's gonna be welding. Well, I thought back to what did I struggle with when I first started welding? You know, what is, what are the things that really confused me or what are the learning curves that I had to deal with? So the easiest way for me to explain this to you about how to weld properly is probably how to not weld properly. And the great thing about MIG welding is, is that you can almost tell by the sound of what you're doing whether it's right or wrong. So you, you have the sound combined with the results and that'll tell you kind of what if you're doing it right. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to start out welding and we're going to have our wire feed speed set too fast. So we've already got the welder set up within the range that we think it should be or according to the chart and that was 4 and 45 for the eighth inch material that we're working with. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a wire feed speed that is way fast then I will bring you in and I'll show you what that bead profile looks like. And then we'll go to the opposite end of the spectrum and show you what it looks like and what it sounds like when the bead, uh, when the wire feed speed is too slow. And then I'll bring you in and show you what that looks like. So the happy medium between those two, too fast or too slow, would be just right. And then you'll be able to see what a bead that is done just right looks like. So with that being said, we've got our respirator, our gloves, our safety glasses, our welding mask, we've got our coffee. That's probably almost the most important thing we can have is the coffee. You gotta have that. And uh, so let's get going. Alright guys, so that I can talk to you, I'm gonna risk my health and not wear my mask. That's right, you guys are causing me to risk my health. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should be wearing a mask, but I'm just going to do some quick welds here, so, and I want to be able to talk to you. So I like to wear my safety glasses underneath my welding hood. That way, uh, if I need to transfer from 
welding to grinding, I can just easily flip my hood up and I've already got my eye protection on. So, and I, I just think it's a good idea to, to do that. But that's just my, that's, that's just my personal opinion. So to recap, this is going to be wire feed speed too fast. Wow, so did you guys hear that like popping? It's called stubbing. It's, uh, let me bring you in. So that was a really fast wire speed. So it was just putting out way too much wire. You guys could hear it popping and uh, it's called stubbing. Basically the wire is coming out through the MIG gun faster than it can apply itself to the material. And just look at the weld. There's nothing uh, that looks right about that. You see how it's all globby and yeah, just doesn't look good. This is gonna be slow wire feed speed. And another thing you should get into is always trimming back your wire in between weld passes. Get yourself a set of MIG pliers, super handy. They, you can use them to take the tip off the gun and trim the wire back and uh, mix for a better reason. <laughs> Now we have the complete opposite. That's a real slow wire feed speed. You see how the bead is uh, very like uh, bulbous looking. It's thin and it's splotchy. That's because there is not enough wire feed speed. It's not putting down the material evenly or fast enough. All right, this is gonna be the recommended travel speed for the wire. Now be listening to the difference between what we started out with too fast and then what it sounded like too slow and what it's going to sound like now. And it should sound like frying bacon is what it's often uh, described as. That's the correct wire speed feed or recommended settings. That's when we were welding it with a too slow wire feed speed. And the back side is the too fast wire speed feed. So now that we've got a general idea of what it sounds like and what it looks like when you're traveling at the proper wire feed speed and the proper amperage, the next thing comes to mind is, is how do I hold it? You know, how do I hold the actual torch itself? Um, do I drag it? Do I push it? Uh, what's the tilt angle? Um, and what is the action that you do? Those are all learning curves that, uh, that you gotta kinda overcome. And it does take practice to figure this out. Let's talk about uh, dragging, meaning you're going in this direction, or pushing, which means you're going in that direction. So dragging your, you know, this is a way that I find it easy uh, to explain it or when I was learning of how it worked. So think of the wire that comes out of this gun as water. So it's squirting water out of it, okay? So if you're working with flux core, meaning that you don't have any gas, it, the, the flux is in the wire, flux core produces slag. Well, a saying is that if it produces slag, then you drag. So meaning you would be facing the torch away from where you're welding. So you'd be dragging the torch along this way. And the theory behind that is, is the simple reason, so you don't trap your slag inside of your weld. 
and it creates porosity. So, but that's all you really need to know. Uh, so just picture that water is coming out of the end of it. If it has slag, you drag. That's not to say that you can't drag when you're using uh, C25 gas. I probably do it equally. I probably drag as much as I push. Uh, and there's just, and there's no rhyme or reason. I, I honestly, I can't explain why I would do one over the other. I would obviously always drag if it has slag, um, but I don't, I, I don't know. It, it's usually just kind of positioning where I'm at. You know, it might, if it's easier for me to, to see and for me to go this way, then I will. If it's, if I'm in a tight spot and it's easier for me to go this way and push forward, I will. Maybe I drag a little bit more than I push, but. So, torch angle. Let's uh, talk about that. Let me bring the camera down so it's a little bit closer and you guys can see it from maybe like two points of view because that can be kind of confusing. All right, so let's say I wanted to join these two pieces together, okay? So we'll slide those together like that. Ah, that's hot, that's still, that's still hot. Hey guys, when you weld on metal, it gets hot. Just FYI. Um, Okay, so we want to weld that. So this direction, okay, you are going to be right in between. You're going to be right in between both pieces, okay? You're not going to be, think of it again as water spraying out. You're not going to spray the water more on that piece than you would spray it on that piece. You're going to spray it evenly down the middle of that joint, okay? There's also a little technique we're going to do, but let's first things first. So side to side tipping it for this joint. You're not going to go that way more than you're going to go that way. You're going to go right down the center of that joint. Okay. So now that we know this angle, now we got to talk about this angle. Okay. So now I'm going to bring you 90 degrees of where you are right now. Now we got to determine this angle. Okay. We need to be like that, like that. We've already determined that angle, okay? So if this is perfectly up and down, okay? If that's perfectly straight, I'd say maybe that's about 15 degrees. That's, that's the angle that I would weld at right there. About 15 degrees right here, okay? Let me get you above me and I'll show you the action or the movement that I would make to weld this. All right, do you guys remember back in the stick uh, welding episode where I talked about the whip and pause technique with 6011 rod? Well, those skills that you build into that kind of play into a little bit to this, okay? So, so now that we know our angles this way and this way, okay? You don't just squirt it right down the center. There's a little bit of an action and it's kind of a whip and pause, okay? So you're gonna hold a little bit of heat on this side, jump it over to the other side. Come over, and I'm gonna exaggerate this, I'm gonna exaggerate my movements. You see how I'm going ahead a little bit, but I'm going back. I'm going ahead a little bit and going back. Going ahead a little bit and going back. Going ahead a little bit, and when I pause, I'm pausing on the outsides of the corners. I'm pausing on this plate, and I'm pausing on this part, okay? Okay, so now that you guys are familiar with holding the torch at the proper angle, now what we gotta do is talk about uh, stick. what's called stick out. So that is how far away the metal wire is sticking out of the end of the MIG gun and how far you're holding that away. So I say, for me that works best, I hold it probably not much more than a quarter of an inch away ever. So for me, probably the maximum that I would hold it away is probably something like that. And if you're holding it out here, holding it out here, you're gonna hear it because it's gonna do the same thing as a fast wire feed. It's gonna start stubbing. It's gonna make that, 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 that sound. So 
hold it about a quarter of an inch away, that's a good rule of thumb, and you'll hear it. If you hold it too close, it's going to sound sputtery. If you hold it too far away, it's going to sound sputtery. It's one of those things that you're going to be able to hear it, and you're just going to say, oh, that sounds like it's running really smooth at that distance I am away, and that's where you want to run it. You can see it's not it's not globule. It's a nice smooth bead. It's not dug in too deep to the sides and it's not too proud. So it looks like it has good good fusion. All right. So one of the things that I uh, do while the welder is still hot and warm is I like to cut the little BB off the end of the MIG wire right there. So I cut that off and I cut that off flush to the nozzle. Then I pull the nozzle off, exposing just uh, the tip. And I wipe that all off, get that all cleaned up. Any spatter or anything that's on that, I like to get rid of that. Then I take a rag and I push it down through the end of the nozzle and clean out any crap that might be in there. Put it back on your uh, MIG gun and like I say it's still warm, give it a uh, that's how I do it. Give it a dunk in your nozzle jelly and off you go. Now you're all ready to use it next time around and it's all clean. You won't have to do anything. There won't be any spatter in there and uh, it'll be all ready to go. Then when you're done, coil everything up. Make sure you shut your bottle off. Don't forget about that. Be a shame for uh, you to come down the next day into the workshop and see that your gauge is on zero because all your argon or your C25 drained out. That'd be terrible. $85 right in the atmosphere. So guys, those are just a few tips, but nothing is really going to substitute you going out there and putting your hands on this stuff and just actually getting time in the seat of welding. That's really what it takes. If you can get the fundamentals down and the basics, like I've explained to you today, just go out there and weld. You, you'll know what looks kind of strange and what doesn't. Um, and as you're doing it, the, the more you do it, the just like with anything, the better you're going to get. So I hope you enjoyed this time. It was a lot of fun to do. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Until the next one, see ya. Oh, and I'll leave a link down below for all the stuff I'm using. See ya.